In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear young generation, today we celebrate the feast of the baptism of our Lord. And this baptism of our Lord reminds us of our own baptism. With our baptism, we participate in the whole vocation, the prophetic vocation, the mission, the life of Jesus, the Son of God, revealed to us at the River Jordan. Today, this day, as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, Therefore, we turn to God our Father with confidence and to confess our sins, especially the occasions where we have failed to be true to our vocation of baptism, to be the priests, the kings, and the prophets for God's kingdom. Let us recognize our weakness, our failures, and we ask the good Lord to pardon us. I confess to so Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Almighty ever living God, who when Christ has been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Come to me, that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in fatness. Incline your ear and will to me hear that your soul may live, and I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know that not, and nations that knew you shall not run to you because of that Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. 
let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the lord that he may have mercy on him and to our god for he will be abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways says the lord for as the heavens and higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and return not thither that water the earth making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes from forth from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i purpose and prosper in the thing which i sent it the word of the lord thanks be to god your response with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation my salvation i trust i shall not fear for the lord is my strength my song he became my savior with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation my deed known to the peoples declare the greatness of his name which joy will draw water from the wells of salvation sing a song to the for joy for great in your midst is the holy one of israel which joy you will draw water from the wells of A reading from the first letter of St. John's. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ has been begotten by God, and whoever loves the Father that begot him loves the child whom he begets. We can be sure that we love god's children if we love god himself and do what he has commanded us this is what loving god is keeping his commandments and his commandments are not difficult because anyone who has been begotten by god has already overcome the world This is 
the victory over the world, our faith. Who can overcome the world? Only the man who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood, not with water only, but with water and blood, with the Spirit as another witness. Since the Spirit is the truth, so that there are three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three of them agree. We accept the testimony of human witnesses, but God's testimony is much greater, and this is God's testimony given as evidence for his Son. The Word of God. Thanks be to God. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Taken from chapter 1, verses 7 to 11. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am. And I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was at that time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come out of water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, my beloved, my favor is upon you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, as I said in the beginning of the Mass, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, it is our faith, our feast, and our solemnity, the solemnity, the feast of our own baptism. And there is a great similarity in what happens at the River Jordan on the day that Jesus was baptized and with the baptism that we receive in our churches to become part of the same mission, same vocation, and the same heritage of God's love for humanity or for God's uh, part of God's grace for the humanity. And we see in the first reading today, taken from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 to 11, we heard that God is telling the people that you cannot buy what I am giving you with the money you have. And therefore, don't waste your energy don't waste your money and don't waste your capabilities and capabilities and your talents because you are not going to gain what I can give you. Therefore, I give you freely because you are not able to acquire what I am giving you freely in baptism. And we see then how it has been justified in the reading today is a reference to David. David has been called by God a shepherd who becomes a king, and therefore a shepherd who is a king, and a king who is a shepherd. Now this vocation that was given to David, now has been transmitted to the people, because we find that in Psalm 89, that with David God makes God makes a covenant and God makes a promise. So God makes a promise in order to make a covenant. And he makes a covenant with a promise. Now this promise and this covenant has been accomplished by David by his faithfulness to his vocation. He has fought fights and wars against. And he has been faithful despite his weakness to give testimony to God who called him from shepherdhood to become a king. Now this mission, we say in Psalm 18, verse 44, this mission is now given to the people. So the people become a royal family, a prophetic family, or a priestly nation. The same vocation. And therefore we say that people now become the mediator between God and, be, between, and the world. And this is a vocation that develops slowly and gradually with the choice of people in the Old Testament. And today we find the testimony by David. So we move. We move to the gospel today. And it is a beautiful scenario where Jesus is publicly proclaimed by God the Father by voice. And there are only two occasions where God speaks in favor of the Son. And that is first occasion is a baptism. And the second occasion is the transfiguration, the confirmation of the vocation of the Son, the accomplishment, the fulfillment of the Old Testament with the presence of Moses and with the presence of Elijah. And today what we see in the, in the baptismal event is that the, the, uh, Jesus is proclaimed as the Son of God, but he comes from Nazareth. And Nazareth is a humble place, a poor place, a modest place. And therefore, God wants to tell us that Jesus is called from very humble situations to become the Son of God, the chosen one. Now, he becomes in the Psalm number 2, and as well as Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1, 
we come across that Jesus has been elected. He has been chosen. He has been called by name, proclaimed, professed, confirmed by God the Father with the descent of the Holy Spirit. The heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit descends from heaven in the form of a dove. And therefore, the whole creation rejoices at the appearance, the public appearance of the Son of God, the Savior of the universe, Son of God and Son of David. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 63 speaks to us about this uh, appearance, the proclamation of the Son. Therefore, we say, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear young generation, that we understand today that the heavens were open, the Holy Spirit descends, and the word of God comes back to resound. The voice of the Father is heard. The whole creation rejoices. The Son appears, and he is baptized for a vocation. Therefore, we proceed, and we say that in our baptism as well, the whole pattern of the revelation takes place. That is the beauty. When our children are baptized, we go back in centuries backward to the event that took place in River Jordan by John the Baptist. Name was proclaimed, announced to the world. Therefore, the priest, when baptizing us, call us by name. Call us by, he calls us by name for the baptism. And then he, he proclaims and presents to the world. He anoints us with the oil to cast out all our sins and to all the powers of hell and all powers of evil on our, upon us. Then he baptizes us in the name of the Holy Trinity and he anoints us once more with the oil of chrism to tell us that we are called to be kings, we are called to be prophets, and we are called to be priests for the kingdom of God. Now, how can we live that prophecy to be a prophet? How can we live that kingship to be a king? How can we live that priesthood to be a priest? in our baptism. And that is where we reveal and we come across, we understand what has been revealed to us in the second reading, the first letter of John, chapter 5, verses 1 to 9. It is the whole episode of love. And there is no testimony anyone can give without love. And you cannot love anyone without without testimony. So all the testimony that depends on that your love is proclaimed, made known by the way that you live, by the way that you observe God's commandments, that you cannot observe God's commandments without love. Therefore, it is a story of love, revelation of love. It is a life of love that we are called to live, to absorb, to assimilate, in our baptism. My dear brothers and sisters, my dear young generation in Christ, and Jesus today, the John tells us in the first letter, he speaks to us about the water in the river Jordan. He speaks to us about the blood of the cross. And these two elements confirm to us, reveal to us the whole salvific plan of God the Father. It is by the baptism of purification, baptism of forgiveness. It is by shedding of blood on the cross that he has cleansed us from all our sins and made us be part of the whole salvific mission by our baptism. Baptism is a vocation. Baptism is a call. And baptism is a mission. The mission vocation, a call to be part of the whole mystery of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ.
My dear brothers and sisters, we profess our faith, the faith that the church is being nourished, and the faith that saves us and heals us. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth, of all, of all things, things visible and invisible. I believe, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the, the only begotten Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was, he was crucified, crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the, the Lord, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the, to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the faith that we professed, the faith of the church and the faith of all those baptized, we present to God our Father our prayers and petitions, praying for the whole world, praying for the universe, for the people, especially those who are suffering at this moment because of COVID-19 and all other troubles, financial matters, spiritual matters. With one faith we pray. Your response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we bring the Holy Father, Pope Francis, Cardinals, Bishops, Reverend Fathers and Reverend Sisters before your throne. Bless and guide them that they will be strengthened to take your mission forward. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as you heard the voice of God the Father at River Jordan and obeyed completely, help us to hear the voice of God and obey. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we bring our motherland. Guide our leaders with your Holy Spirit so that they will take our motherland forward. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Abba, Father, we bring all who have contracted with this corona pandemic, bring healing for, to all of them through your precious blood and protect every one of us. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our heart, we pray for our personal intentions. We pray for all of you who watch and participate in this Eucharistic meal, for your families and for your loved ones. God, our loving Father, grant all that we have asked you according to your holy will and according to your will, what is that what we deserve in order to give praise and worship to your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice we offer may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. God, our loving Father, accept the offerings we have brought to you honor to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of Jordan, you reveal with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us and by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, Father, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy 
these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was rendered, he took the chalice and giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death your will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Joseph was the patron saint of our land, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for un unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Malcolm Ranjit our Bishop and his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
through him and wait in and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us turn to God our Father with confidence in the words our brother Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us, us from you. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be to you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. God, our loving Father, nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy 
that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in the name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Joy of Christ.